They're loyal beasts. They were. Now they're starving. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the most villainous characters in Game of Thrones and House of the Dragon who got what was coming to them. Say that word again. And what? You'll kill your own father in the privy. Number 20, Marin Trant. I can see I have my work cut out for me. You two, out. Cruel and arrogant, Sir Marin Trant personifies what a Kingsguard knight should not be. He wields his power against the weak and helpless, reveling in wanton violence, and follows the sadistic orders of King Joffrey without question. It's no surprise that he gets himself on Arya's list after killing her instructor Sirio. She finally gets her revenge in the fifth season finale, when she ambushes Trant in a brothel. As satisfying as his death is, it also has to be one of the most brutal in the show. Those gurgly screams are something else. You're no one. You're nothing. Number 19, The Waif. The many-faced god was promised a name. He must always receive what is his. One of the main antagonists of the fifth and sixth seasons, the Waif is a devoted acolyte of the faceless men who lives to torment Arya Stark. Ruthless and brutal, she is a professional assassin tasked with training Arya, but she resents the Stark girl and hopes to one day kill her. Unfortunately for the Waif, the pupil becomes the master. Arya survives the Waif's attempt on her life and lures her into a dark room, where, used to fighting without sight, Arya has the advantage. We don't see the kill itself, but we do see the aftermath in the Hall of Faces. Arya really does have a thing for eyes. A girl is Arya Stark of Winterfell, and I'm going home. Number 18, Gerald Bracken. Grandsire of my grandsire aided the dragon in his war of conquest. Aye, the Blackwoods truly turned the tide on that one. <laughs> this pompous suitor from House Bracken did not have a lot of screen time, but it was enough to make us instantly hate him. Gerald is at Storm's End, hoping to wed the touring Rhaenyra Targaryen. He mocks his young rival, Willem Blackwood, amusing Rhaenyra. But like most people of his ilk, Gerald probably wasn't betting on his target fighting back. Little Willem unsheathes his sword and challenges Gerald to a duel, which he wins, stabbing Bracken in the guts. We were definitely rooting for Willem here, although we didn't quite expect that outcome. Don't look, princess. Number 17, Zaro Zoan Doxos. Khaleesi, please. He said you'd never leave Karth alive. Come. Basically the Karth equivalent of Littlefinger, Zaro Zoan Doxos is an ambitious man concerned with little more than his own personal power. And if gaining power means manipulation, betrayal, and murder, then so be it. He hopes to use Daenerys to usurp the Thirteen and become the King of Karth. His mistake lies in stealing her dragons. Needless to say, the Targaryen does not appreciate that very much, and after retrieving her babies, she storms Zaro's house and locks him inside an empty vault. It's a wonderfully symbolic death, the duplicitous Zaro dying inside of his own lie. Thank you. Zaro Zoan Doxos. Thank you for teaching me this lesson. Number 16, Craster. I'll leave them if you've not the stomach, and I'll sort them myself. Whose throat are you gonna cut, old man? The Game of Thrones universe is rife with incest, and Craster is one of its biggest practitioners. A member of the Free Folk, Craster is known far and wide for marrying his own daughters and fathering more daughters with them. When they birth boys, Craster sacrifices his sons to the White Walkers, having long conceded defeat and hoping to ally himself to their cause. So when Night's Watchman Carl Tanner stabs Craster through the chin, we can't say we're surprised, even if Carl was just after Craster's winter stockpiles. Frankly, it was only a matter of time before someone snapped. Wait outside. It's cold outside, and there's nothing to eat. Number 15, Ilaria Sand. I never got to have a mother, but Marcella did. She was mine, and you took her from me. Why did you do that? Children are meant to be off limits. It's one of those simple facts of life we all agree on. So while we felt bad for Ilaria Sand after her lover Oberyn was killed, her sympathy flew out the window when she murdered both Marcella Baratheon and Tristane Martell. Hell bent on revenge, Ilaria even kills Oberyn's older brother Duran, usurping power in Dorne. 
She's eventually captured alongside her daughter Tyene by Euron Greyjoy and sent to Cersei, the queen enacting an admittedly cruel act of revenge on the woman who killed her daughter. You do not mess with a mama bear, especially if that mama bear is Cersei Lannister. We all make our choices. You chose to murder my daughter. Number 14, The High Sparrow. The trial can wait. We all need to leave. Here's another character who underestimated Cersei Lannister. As the small folk suffer during the War of the Five Kings, the High Sparrow emerges as a powerful religious leader. While compassionate towards the small folk, he's also fanatical and cunning, re-establishing the dormant faith militant and ruling King's Landing with an iron fist. But after he imprisons and humiliates the Queen Mother, well, you can only get one over on Cersei for so long. Set to go on trial in the Great Sept of Baelor, she instead uses the opportunity to ignite a cache of wildfire under the church, killing the High Sparrow and his followers. And he got off lucky, unlike Septa Unella, whom Cersei imprisons in the dungeons. You're not going to die today. You're not going to die for quite a while. Number 13, Stannis Baratheon. I was there when he was murdered by a shadow with your face. Now, we have to admit that Stannis has a point. He is, after all, the rightful king, as Robert's children are not his own. He just goes about everything the wrong way, like having his younger brother Renly assassinated and burning his own child alive. Of course, he ends up reaping what he sowed. Much of his army deserts him after he burns Shireen, and then he naively storms Winterfell anyway. It's no surprise that he's handily defeated by the Boltons. Ultimately, Stannis is executed by Brienne, who's seeking revenge for the death of Renly. Sorry, buddy, but you deserved everything that came to you. Go on, do your duty. Number 12, Kragas Drehar. I have ordered 10 ships and 2,000 men to set sail from King's Landing to join the effort in the Stepstone. Known as the crab feeder to his enemies, Kragas Drehar is the self-styled Prince Admiral of the Triarchy, an alliance of free cities over in Essos. He gets the attention of Westeros when he blockades sea lanes in the Stepstones, plundering Westerosi ships and feeding their crews to the crabs. You know, it's not often that we side with Daemon, but in this case, we just can't help ourselves. The Targaryen prince storms the island of Bloodstone with the help of Laenor Velaryon astride sea smoke and pursues the crab feeder into a cave. He then does his business with Dark Sister, and the results are grotesque. Still, the guy deserved it. It is instead my hope that this aid will deliver the victory that has thus far evaded us. Number 11, Gregor Clegane. Whether you know him as Sir Gregor, the Mountain, or essentially just a massive undead husk, Gregor Clegane was quite the brutal character. He was responsible for killing some of our favorite characters. Not only that, but he tormented his brother Sandor in their youth, a character we grew to appreciate as time drew on. You say your brother gave you that sword. My brother gave me this. It was just like you said a while back. Press me to the fire like I was a nice, juicy mutton chop. As the series wound down to a close, we knew Clegane Bowl was coming, and in the penultimate episode, Sandor finally confronts his zombified brother. Hello, big brother. On the steps of the crumbling Red Keep, the two have a rough-and-tumble brawl for the ages. With Gregor proving extremely difficult to kill, Sandor makes sure they both go out in a blaze of glory. <laughs> Let's just hope Gregor is actually dead for good. Number 10, Krasnys Monaklos. You may not know this slave trader by name, but we guarantee you, you know his death. They fear nothing. Even the bravest men fear death. Operating in Astapor, Krasny's Monoclos was one of the most arrogant, disrespectful people in the known world, as if his profession wasn't bad enough. Over the course of three episodes, Krasny's negotiates with Daenerys Targaryen over the sale of his unsullied army. Believing her to not speak Valyrian, Krasny's insults Daenerys to no end with his misogynistic tongue. Las Angoda. Be 
Eventually, Daenerys agrees to trade Drogon for the Unsullied. However, Daenerys not only reveals she can speak Valyrian, but has Drogon roast the traitor on the spot before taking the army for herself. Let it be learned. This is what happens when you piss off the Queen of Dragons. Number 9. Alistair Thorne and Ollie. To be fair, Alistair Thorne and Ollie are not the only ones who get punished for their crimes, but they're the two who drew our ire the most for very different reasons. We should have sealed the tunnel while we had the chance, like you suggested. It was a difficult decision either way, sir. Do you know what leadership means, Lord Snow? Alistair, for his part, was always a crotchety old cow. Constantly a thorn in everyone's sides. Ollie, on the other hand, is a character who should have had a better head on his shoulders, but ultimately got pulled astray. For the watch. <laughs> In the season 5 finale, several men of the Night's Watch ambush their Lord Commander Jon Snow for his controversial leadership decisions and do him in for the Watch. Thankfully, Jon comes back to life and makes sure his first order of business is returning the favor. If I had to do it all over, knowing where I'd end up, I pray I'd make the right choice again. They knew what the punishment for treason was. Number 8. Blood and Cheese All right. What if we can't find him? We've seen our share of despicable villains throughout the franchise, but few stoop so low as Blood and Cheese. Blood is a gold cloak in the City Watch, and Cheese is a local rat catcher, both of whom are hired by Daemon to kill Aemond Targaryen. Unable to find him in the Red Keep, they settle for young Jaehaerys. This is one of the most haunting scenes in either show maybe even in the history of television, as the two psychopaths commit the unspeakable. Both are eventually killed by Aegon in retaliation, and we have to say, we do not feel the least bit bad about it. Number 7. Joffrey Baratheon For a little over three seasons, no Game of Thrones character infuriated us quite like Joffrey Baratheon. One word and I hit you again. I'm telling mother! Oh. While he started off as nothing but a brat, everything was exacerbated when he inherited the throne. He constantly took to sadistically tormenting those beneath him, and even needlessly had killed ostensible series lead Ned Stark. So long as I am your king, treason shall never go unpunished. Sir Illyn, Bring me his head. Honestly, his comeuppance probably should have come a whole lot sooner, but boy was it gratifying when it did. During the wedding feast for his union to Marjorie Tyrell, Joffrey is poisoned and starts convulsing in front of everyone. It's not long before the Boy King's face turns different colors and he takes his last breath. So that's why it's called the Purple Wedding. Number 6. Walder Frey Speaking of horrifying weddings, Walder Frey executed perhaps the most grisly ambush in Game of Thrones history. At the union between Edmure Tully and one of his many daughters, Walder capped off the night by having slain Rob and Catelyn Stark, in addition to the former's pregnant wife Talisa. Let him go and I swear that we will forget this. I swear it by the old gods and you. We will take no vengeance. You already swore me one oath right here in my castle. You swore by all the gods your son would marry my daughter! This monster had to go, and thankfully his time came a few seasons later. You're not one of mine, are you? No, my lord. Didn't think so. Too pretty. <laughs> Arya Stark, disguising herself as one of his serving girls, has Walder inadvertently consume his murderous sons she's baked into a pie. Arya then reveals herself making sure the Elder Frey knows what goes around comes around. My name is Arya Stark. I want you to know that. 
the last thing you're ever going to see is a Stark smiling down at you as you die. She then swiftly avenges her fallen mother and brother with one swift blade. Number 5. Liza Aaron When you have a character who callously has people thrown out a moon door to their precipitous demises, you gotta know that character is going out the same way. You want to trial my Lord Lannister? Very well. My son will listen to whatever you have to say, and you will hear his judgment. Then you will leave. By one door or the other. Throughout her life, Lysa grew up in envy of her sister Catelyn, particularly with how the latter earned the affections of their companion Peter Baelish, also known as Littlefinger. Lysa eventually grew to be a spiteful and callous woman, even when fate would seemingly bring her and Littlefinger together. Look down! Look down! Look down! Look down! Lysa! At one point, she threatens to throw Sansa Stark out the moon door for something she didn't do. Littlefinger, wretch though he is, cajoles Lysa before sending her to the very fate she doomed so many others to. <laughs> Number 4. Viserys Targaryen I want what I came for. I want the crown he promised me. He bought you, but he never paid for you. The third of his name, not to mention the worst of his name, Viserys Targaryen sought to reclaim the Iron Throne. Sure, a lot of people on Game of Thrones do, but few do it with quite as much indignation and disrespect for the people helping him. Indeed, with them coming from the same background, Daenerys should be his greatest ally, but Viserys only sees her as a pawn to be used to trade up for power. I need you to be perfect today. Can you do that for me? You don't want to wake the dragon, do you? Viserys gives away Daenerys' hand in marriage to Khal Drogo in exchange for an army, but he doesn't count on them falling in love. When Viserys grows impatient, Drogo makes sure he gets his crown right then and there, in the form of molten gold. A crown for a king. <laughs> Number 3. Littlefinger You stand accused of murder. You stand accused of treason. How do you answer these charges? Lord Baelish. Having plotted and schemed for his entire life, Littlefinger had more coming to him than anyone. Seriously, even though Littlefinger's reach exceeds his grasp, he essentially instigates a great portion of the show's events, and by proxy, a great amount of misery. I did warn you not to trust me. By orchestrating the murder of Jon Arryn, Littlefinger had a great ripple effect on Westeros. But thankfully, that ripple turned into a tsunami and eventually swallowed him whole. None of you knows the truth. You held a knife to his throat. You said, I did warn you not to trust me. After manipulating Sansa and Arya against each other, Littlefinger learns they were in turn manipulating him. Littlefinger finally losing at his own game, his many atrocities are brought to light before the vengeful daughters of the woman he loved see to his downfall. Thank you for all your many lessons, Lord Baelish. I will never forget them. Number 2. Tywin Lannister Though we admire Tywin's political savvy and no-nonsense nature, he's still a real son of a bitch. All oh my life, you've wanted me dead. Yes, but you refuse to die. I respect that, even admire it. Much like Gregor Clegane, Tywin meets his end at the hands of a family member he severely mistreated. Indeed, he all but disowned his son Tyrion simply for being a dwarf. You are not on trial for being a dwarf. Oh, yes I am. I've been on trial for that my entire life. After Tyrion is wrongfully put on trial for Joffrey's murder, He's released by the only relative who's ever shown compassion to him, Jaime. Tyrion then seizes the opportunity to get back at his oppressors, starting with his former flame Shay, whom Tywin turned against him. Then, catching Tywin in a compromising position, Tyrion makes sure his father pays for his insolence. You're no son of mine. I am your son. I have always been your son. <laughs> The sins of the father came back to bite him. 
Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Ramsey Bolton Our time together is about to come to an end. That's all right. Seriously, is there a more despised character on Game of Thrones? Though born a bastard and into a low station in life, Ramsey deserved none of it due to his sadistic and cruel ways. You'll always be my firstborn. Thank you for saying that. It means a great deal to me. Sure, he put an end to his father, Roose Bolton, another character who had it coming, but Ramsey's crimes against humanity have no parallel. He does unspeakable things to numerous characters, including feeding people to his pack of dogs. He's your brother. I prefer being an only child. In a true display of karmic justice, Ramsay is captured and detained following the Battle of the Bastards. His unwilling wife Sansa makes sure he pays dearly, letting loose on him the very hounds he used to bring about so much death. Which death did you find the most satisfying? Let us know in the comments below. I, Brienne of Tarth, sentence you to die. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.